When we apply a load to a structure, we're going to have some kind of deflection or deformation. This deflection is going to be dependent on the magnitude of the load and type of loading that's applied, the span and end conditions of the beam or whatever member we're looking at, and also the material stiffness and uh, section properties. The deflection is also going to be dependent on time. We can break up our deflection into two components, uh, short-term deflections and long-term deflections. Short-term deflections are going to be immediate. Long-term deflections are going to be a result of sustained load, and they'll happen over some period of time. And long-term deflections are primarily due to creep in our concrete. So let's look at a hypothetical deflection versus time plot for the given uh, load history. Uh, first, we have that our forms are removed at time t0, and we'll have an immediate deflection due to our, uh, the removal of our forms. This load is sustained on the beam, so we'll have a long-term deflection due to the sustained load. At time t1, we're going to have a live load that's placed on the beam, and the live load's going to cause an immediate deflection. Part of the live load sustained, so we'll have a sustained load, which means we'll have additional long-term deflection, but only with part of the load. Then at time t2, we have an additional uh, load or the remainder of the live load that's placed on the structure, which is going to cause another immediate deflection. Uh, this load is not sustained though, so then when we go on um, and look at our future long term loading, um, we're still, or we won't have any um, increased long term loading. Um, so this is kind of a, a theoretical um, deflection versus time plot for a given uh, load history. In order to calculate our short-term deflections, we need to make a couple assumptions. Uh, so the first assumption that we make is that we remain in the linear elastic region for our concrete. So our E, or our material stiffness, is just going to be equal to uh, the stiffness of our concrete, which we can find uh, using the ACI um, expressions. Um, second, we need to look at our I. So uh, ACI allows us to find our I based on an applied moment MA. So if our MA is less than our cracking moment, then we can just use our I gross for our section. If our MA is le or greater than our cracking moment, then they give us an expression to find um, the I varying between I gross and I cracked transformed. The general procedure for finding the short-term deflection then is as follows. We first will calculate our gross moment of inertia IG, our cracking moment MCR, and our cracked transformed section properties, I cracked transformed. Next, we'll use our service loads uh, which are unfactored loads um, and the span and boundary conditions to find our applied moment, uh, MA. We'll next use the MA and our other properties that we found before to find our I effective um, using our ACI expressions. If our MA is less than M cracked, then we'll, our I effective is just equal to I gross. Otherwise, we use the ACI expression. Then we'll use our I effective and our EC to find our total deflections. We can see that each applied load is going to cause a different applied moment and a different stiffness and therefore a different deflection. So if we have a different load, then we need to go through the whole process again. So if we were to have a, a different load from P1, then we would need to recalculate our MA, our I effective, and our deflection. 
our long-term deflections are going to be dependent on our load history. So whenever we have an applied load, such as P1, that applied load is going to cause an immediate or short-term short response and a long-term response. So then when we apply P2, we'll have an additional immediate response and an additional long-term response. So what we can do for our long-term deformations is we can find our elastic response or our immediate response. Um, and then find our long-term response. Our long-term response is related to our elastic response in ACI using this lambda factor. And the lambda factor is a function of this C factor, which is a time a dependency factor, and our compression steel. So the more compression steel that we have, the smaller our, our uh, long-term effects. So if we're going to find our long-term deflections, we would first calculate our immediate response and then calculate our lambda factor. And then we can find our total deflections by taking our immediate response plus lambda times uh, delta immediate. For this uh, load history, our delta total would be equal to our delta um, short term or immediate caused by P1 plus our lambda 1 times our delta short term 1. Then we would have a short term immediate response from the difference here, um, which we'll call 2, and then plus our lambda. 2 times delta short term 2. And if we had uh, other applied loads, we could um, you know, modify this expression further to find our total deflection.